Hi everybody, my name is Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. And we are the Yahoo and the Tor YouTube channel. And we thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us. We are um, doing what we do every single day. We are the family that believes that the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator, which are in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, are good for all time. It is good for all ages, and it is what will um, enhance your life, and you will be very, very blessed. Now, for our little family, we have a little tiny family out there, and a lot of little family, we, we kind of keep informed on what goes on in Boss Clan. And um, for our little family out there, let me begin this by saying that if we were all born blood into the, to the tribe of Levites, and we were all sanctified in the Levites, yesterday we would have been kicked out of the Levites. They would have completely kicked us out to the curb. We would have been, they probably would have sent us over to Yehuda or somewhere else um, because it is boss clan zero, cow one. Now, um, some of this may be kind of disturbing and we don't mean it to be disturbing, but I think it's worth the story to tell this and to get it out of here. So if you don't want to hear this, if you're just here for um, strictly reading the scriptures, which is a great thing, you might want to go out a few minutes forward until we're, um, we're done discussing this because it, it is kind of odd. It is somewhat gruesome. Um, and it's, it's something I would like to preface all of this with saying that we love our furry critters in this house probably more than anything. We've spent nights up, days with the sick cows. We have literally done everything possible that we can to save a cow, even staying out half of the night trying to get sick cows to live when we, when we couldn't. And so we love our furry animals and so we dedicate everything. And so when we literally ran out of food, we, we don't have any meat in this house, we had to make a decision that we were going to take out one of our four-year-old cows, Ted. And he just started jumping fences and being coming a very bad cow. So it made the decision much easier. Um, but it's still one of these things that we love our animals and killing just isn't in our nature like this. And, um, you know, you have to be kind of hungry to ever um, be okay with this. So let me start with this. Um, yesterday, we had Ted, our jumping cow, out. We got all of our area that we were going to um, kill him with. We got it all set up. We're ready to roll. We got him over there. And um, we were given some grain. We all prayed. We um, told Ted we were sorry. Um, and I took a... We, we had two options to make this kill. We, in this country, we have, um, the only legal weapon that I have is, is a shotgun, um, a 12 gauge. And it was one of those things. And, and there's a lot of information for a lot of people, but you know, you, you, you've seen what shotguns can do to people. And the last thing I really wanted to do was like take off part of the head of my cow, um, just trying to get him down. And so our other option was these very high end, um, air guns that we ended up with um we, we went and we saved this widow down here then in south america we had a whole bunch of gringos that were taking out this widow that were trying to steal everything she had she moved back to the states we jumped in we did what we always do and got in a lot of trouble um got the cops called us on that one as well but we got all her stuff saved um went to uh we got it all shipped back to the u.s in the process she left us um like three high-end um, air weapons. And one was like a 45, one is a 50 cal. They call it a 50 something cal. And it's not like the big, um, like a 50 like cal. If you're, you're talking like military stuff, it's like a, if, if anyone knows what a 44 looks like, um, it looks on, on a shell, it, um, the, the actual, um, load it is, uh, it looks probably half the size bigger than a 44. It's a very big slug. And these weapons, um, you have to use an air compressor, a special kind of an air compressor, and you pump these things up. It's, it's really dramatic, and it's, it's really sketchy, um, these, these air weapons. And so I decided I was going to take this cow out with a 50 cal um, weapon. And so it was only pumped up to about 150 pounds per, se pounds per inch. I don't even know what that means in, in air gun world. Um, it goes up to 200, right, Jade? Yeah. 200. So I went out there with one with 50, 150 and we have ended the lives of our sick cows before small cows, um, calves, things of this nature. It, it blows right through there. It ends their life very quick. It's very gruesome, very terrible. Um, and so I st stood there four feet within four feet of Ted, the cow. And I said, I'm very, very sorry. I love you, Ted. Um, I'm, I'm hungry too. So you're going to have to eat. And I fired that shot and 
my head kind of went back a little bit and it all of a sudden blood started coming out of my head. Ted looks up and he decides he's not going to stick around for this. He just starts taking off. I'm sitting there with blood now streaming down my uh, forehead and um, I look around and I don't remember. Cade said, I, what, what, what did I do exactly? He's like, that hurts. Yeah, I, I took my head back up and I'm like, wow, that hurt. Um, and the cow is just walking away. Nobody knew what in the world was going on. You know, we had, um, unfortunately, we have executed other cows before with the same process. No problem. Within four feet, and I was going to make sure this was humane, it was right between the eyes. It bounced right off his eyes and hit me right between the four, right in the forehead. Um, it was very, very crazy. So I'm like, wow, this obviously this air weapon did not have enough this power to this thing. And so I'm all walking inside and um, Miss Nicole, as sweet as she is, she probably dropped some bombs, um, looks at me and my, um, my, head is, my head is bleeding. She didn't know what was going on because she was trying to take care of the 10 pit bulls in here with some music on, making sure that um, they didn't get triggered and have more issues. So Jay pumps this, this gun up all the way to the very tippy tippy top, 200. Um, and literally this would, I, I'm not gonna say it's gonna shred a man, but it would, it would definitely kill a man. It would, without a shadow of a doubt, at close enough range, this would kill a, a man. So I went back out there again, and um, there was no, Ted wasn't even bleeding. Like it, like it didn't even, we didn't even know it hit him, honestly. Um, and I'm within four feet, and so um, Caden thought I had hit a rock the first time. So we did it again. So Ted's sitting there eating the grain, completely content. I shoot him again. Bam, nothing happens at all. Nothing. He like, uh, in fact, I think he might have, one of these times I shot him, he like looks up and then looks back down and starts eating his grain again. Um, it wasn't working. I mean, I had no idea what was going on. And so we tried this three times. And um, well, at least he was shot three times. I think it actually went off a couple more. But we, we know of three shots that made it. Not a single shot ever went into Ted. We didn't know what we were going to do. We have this cow and we're like, we didn't know if he was injured. We didn't know what in the world was going on. And he's a large, large cow. Um, what's your guys' guess of weight? Six, mm -hmm. 700 pounds? I think oh, more than Because oh, oh. remember Jim, they said Jim was like 700. And Ted's better than Jim. Yeah, so he was, okay, so he's probably close to 1,000 pounds. And he's pretty nimbly bimbly. So we decided that we were going to, um, unfortunately, cut his throat. And so we did everything we could to get this cow down and everything was going against us. One point, the cow went crazy, jumped around. Jaden was in the way of it. The cow hit Jaden. Jaden flipped through the tables, the, the cut tables that we had out there, basically knocked the tables down. Jaden went flying. Um, Jade got up with a, uh, let's just say the, the, he had the spirit of Messiah Yahushua with him. He grabbed the tables. He flipped the tables. He was so ticked off. And I'm like, pick those tables up, Jade. I said, this is just a little bit of a, a, a fight club here. You know, we are all um, men here. And this is sometimes what happens. Sometimes you get roughed up a little bit. And um, so we, we sit there and we, here's, here's the good news. We never did anything. Um, after we, uh, we couldn't, we could not um, bring ourselves to cut his throat because we had done that with another animal and it was, it was still, it was a horrible death. And um, we are absolutely not Levites. So we let Ted up and we brought him back over here. And Ted became, from instead of our steak, Ted became our patient. We left him here. And I think he's still alive. Um, he, he has no, like, real wounds. He was good last night. We got him grass. And we just, he became patient Ted instead of steak Ted. And um, we uh, had successfully failed. And we are successfully no meat in our freezer. And so we are back to square one. And... Um, yeah, that is the life of Boss Clan. And um, anyone have thoughts on the whole incident yesterday? Um, anybody? Ever, it was dramatic. It was extremely dramatic, especially trying to bring a cow down uh, to the point where you're going to subdue it, a large thousand pound cow, and cut its throat. And, uh, you know, especially where you don't have high power weaponry that you can do this with, it is a, um, it is a interesting time. Thoughts, anyone? De decom um, decompression. Did I tell the story right? Yeah, yeah I think so. everything there was right. Um, Get up here. Just speak not a lot of uh, great things happen with that. No, there's nothing great. Not not a single great thing. Um, I didn't. I, I mean, I don't know how much 200 pounds of uh, force is. I, I know when I got shot between the head with a 50 cal. Um, it's not even a 50 cal. So when I say it like that, it's a like 50 cal air gun, which is is there's zero comparison to a real 50 cal. Zero. Um, the air guns are just like kind of like kids' toys. I mean, they will do the job, but it's not a real 
weapon. And so that is it. That is the story of Boss Clan and um, the story of uh, not being able to fill our freezers full of meat. And I guess we will try again in a while, but it's going to be a little bit before we get our uh, before we get our nerve ready again and, and everything. We were totally ready. We thought this was going to be the, the best, uh, you know, as far as execution goes, the best we could have done because we've, we've had to end the lives of a lot of little cows before because they got really super sick and they could no longer move. And it's always a very horrible thing. But we thought yesterday was going to be well. It actually turned out very not well. So that's the story of Boss Clan. Um, let us begin with our reading this morning and see if we can have maybe a better day today. Um, it's going to be less... Uh, there's no steaks. There's no, uh, no roast. There's no hamburger. But um, at least we got lentils. We got lentils till the cows come home. And uh, I guess Ted came home. Here we go. So we are in Yokanan 17. And for those who do not know, um, Yochanan is uh, another name. Well, it's actually like a Hebrew name for, for John, Yochanan. So here we go. Yahushua said these and lifted up his eyes to the Shemaim and said, Father, the hour has come. Esteem your Ben, which is Ben is your son, so that your Ben also might esteem you. As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give everlasting Kai, which is life, to all whom you have given him. Okay, let's discuss this very first thing. He begins and he says, Father, the hour has come. Esteem your son, so that your son also might esteem you. A lot of people are broken in this trinity. A lot of people, every single day that we talk to, have the trinity. They believe that Messiah Yahushua is the same as Yahuwah. And um, it is very, very clear when you read the book of John they are separate entities. Anyone have anything on this? Uh, no, I'm clear to say there's two different people here. If it's your first time reading and you, you, and you didn't know any other religion, you would think this is two different people. Yeah, yeah. If you were not indoctrinated by doctrines of men, this would obviously be two separate people. Three, and this is everlasting Kai, that they should know you, the only true Elohim, and Yahushua Mashiach, whom you have sent. I have esteemed you on the earth, having accomplished the work you have given me that I should do. And now esteem me with yourself, Father, with the esteem which I had with you before the world was. Does this say the son of our creator is the same person as our creator? No, it doesn't, no. not at all. It, it doesn't say it at all, right? He, ta he is talking in, a, in two separate things. He's like, he's talking to his father. He goes, father, esteem me with yourself. And then he's talking about esteem that he had before the world was. Messiah Yahushua, Jesus the Christ, as you guys know him by, was with our creator before creation. How long was he the son before creation? We have zero idea. We have no idea. All we know of is what we know of as time. And time for us, it seems like, you know, one day seems like a long time. A year seems like a long time. Years, you know, it just, it goes so fast for us. But when you don't care about time and when you exist without time, then Messiah Yahushua, they, they could have had many, there could have been many, many things that there, there were prior to this, but they are not the same individuals. Six, I have revealed your name to the men whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. And you gave them to me, and they have guarded your word. Okay, the people were his fathers. The father gave the people to him. Right. Right? He, he doesn't say, I have, you, the world has revealed my name to men, and I gave, you know, he, none of this is in his own tense. He is not the creator of the world. He's the son. Seven. Now they have come to know that all you gave to me is from you. Again. You gave me, me, you, you, me. It's not the same individual. Eight, because the words which you gave me, I have given to them and they have received them and have truly known that I came forth from you and they believed that you sent me. Okay, again, you sent me, <laughs> um, you gave to me. It's two separate entities. Nine, I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours and all are yours and all mine are yours and yours are mine. And I have been esteemed in them. Again, um, mine, yours, yours, mine, me, I, uh, you, 
those those kind of things, right? It's it's all <laughs> two separate entities. Eleven. And I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you. Kodesh, Father, guard them in your name, which you have given me, so that they might be one as we are. All right, let's talk about it. He just said we are one. Let's talk about this right here. They are united. They are. They use the. They are of like one mind, right? When Yahuwah says something, Yahusha agrees with it. Were we all one mind trying to kill our cow Ted? Yes. And then we were all one mind when we decided to let him go as well. Yep. And so it didn't make us all the same person. It just says we are, um, we are all we were working as the same team, right? And that's that's what Messiah and his dad were are doing is they are working as a team. Messiah. Sephir it says they are Yakad, which is unity. They're mm -hmm. in unity. All right, twelve. When I was with them in the world, I was guarding them in your name which you have given me. And I watched over them, and not one of them perished except the son of destruction, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. Again, when we read scriptures, it is very, very, very clear. They are separate entities. They are, and it's very important that we get this. 13, and now that I have come to you, and I speak these in the world, so that they have my joy completed in them. I have given them your word and the world hated them because they are not of the world as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the wicked. They are not of the world as I am not of the world. Kodesh them in your truth. Your word is truth. Eli, you're uh, falling asleep on me and you're like way behind here, buddy. You're going to have to wake up here, son. Okay, now Kadesh is what, gentlemen? It is holy. It's it's set holy. Apart. Yeah, set apart. Sanctify is what it has in the Sefer. Okay, pay attention, yeah? 19. And for them, I Kadosh myself, so that they too might be Kadosh in truth. And I do not pray for these alone, but also for those believing in me through their word, so that all, so that they all might be one as you Father, are in me, and I in you, so that they too might be one in us, so that the world might believe that you have sent me. All right, here it is. It clearly says he and the Father are one. It says he is in the Father, and the Father is in him. Does it does it say this? Messiah Yahushua is in us. Does it make us okay? Does it say this right here? Yes or no? No. Well, it, it says... He, well, I mean, it he, says he is in him, yeah. Well, okay, so yes or no. Does he say that he is in his father and he... And basically, does yeah, it? Yes. Okay, but it also says, so that they too might be one in us. Might it didn't make the Did, people Elohim. Are we now... Are we now? us Elohim, no. No? I, I think it's like... In, like when people say, like, Yehoshua is in me, like, you can see that you have Yahuwah with you. You have Yahuwah in you. You have you follow his word. How do we you. know that... That Yahuwah and Yahushua is in us. What does that look like? Uh, it depends on the fruit we bear. If we are bearing good fruit or bad fruit. And what else? I mean, how do we know that we are children of the Most High? We're keeping the Torah. We're keeping the Torah. The laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator. That is the only way that we would know that we are His. By keeping His laws. Obedience. Okay. This does not say the Father and the Messiah and we. It does not make us. We're not all. We're not God. We are not Elohim right here, right? Just because the Father and the Son are in us and we are in them, right? If you want to take that in this one verse and make our Creator and His Son the exact same person, well, then you might as well make yourself a God as well if you want to take this out of context. And again, that would be a lowercase g for the God, but I'm, I'm, I'm kidding it to a degree, but I'm trying to get people to snap out of this whole, the whole Trinity thing. 22. And the esteem which you gave me, I have given them, so that they might be as we are one. Okay, hold on. He just said it. He said it again. And this is where the Christians will hold on to this. Let's continue on this verse. He says, we are one, I and them, and you and me, so that they might be perfected into one, so that the world knows that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Okay. When you go and teach the exact same thing, like you could say like like a Christian when they go missionaries, they are one. They are one people. Yeah, and it's the same it's the same thing. This if you take this that our creator and his son are the exact same individuals, then again he says right here that um you are in them as well, right? So 
as and the esteem which you gave me, I have given them so that they may might be as we are one, I and them and you and me. Okay, so if Messiah is in us and we and he is in our creator, I mean, it almost, you know, if you want to go down that road of them being the exact same entity, then you would go down the same road and say that you're part of them because they just said you are part of them. So you got to be very, very careful with the doctrine. 24. Father, I desire that those whom you have given me might be with me where I am so that they see my esteem, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. And again, people are, they, they will take this, um, the, where it says um, you were before the creation of the world and they go, you know, he goes, I am. And um, that was not it. The, our cre people have to understand there was a life our creator and his son and whatever entities there are that was long before us. As crazy as that may sound, we are the end game of creation. We are, we are, <laughs> I don't know how long our creator has been in existence, but it's probably been a very, very long time, far more than we will ever understand, which means he could have had lives. I mean, there, there could be all sorts of stuff that we don't know about. There could be a Mrs. Elohim most high. We, we don't know. Right, we are made in the image of. We don't, we don't know any of this stuff. So let's continue on. O oh, righteous Father, indeed the world did not know you, but I knew you, and these knew that you sent me. Again, you sent me, not the same people, and I have made known, and I have made your name known to them, and shall make it known, so that the love with which you loved me might be in them, and I in me might be in them, and I in them. Okay, a lot of people are getting really confused. They're like, oh, there it is, right? There it is again, Jason. There's enough verses all over scriptures that talk about this that you don't need to get confused on these certain things, right? Don't take one verse out of context. You cannot make your doctrine off of one verse. All scripture must be studied. Everything that we look at has to be examined. We have to run it through. We have to study it to show ourselves approved unto our creator, a workman who needeth not to be ashamed by rightly dividing the word of truth. And that is all of the word of truth. And so if we get stuck on this, this Trinity doctrine, which the entire world is, then it is a, it's blasphemy. It's, it's terrible. Our, our creator is a jealous L and he does not want uh, to share that kind of deity. He will give it to, he will give kingship to his son who is our ruler, but his son is still not Elohim most high. He's still the son of Elohim. So hopefully this helps somebody out there. Hopefully someone down the line, maybe years later, maybe somebody can drop this Trinity doctrine because it is a mess and it is something that is very, very wrong. And so we have to deprogram all of us and get right on track. So th with that, everybody, um, I guess that is the end for Boss Clan. We thank you guys very, very much. Uh, we hope we are alive to see you guys another day and we love you all and we will see you. All right, shalom. shalom.